side of that is um, two code generators and naive JIT that uh, just produces a fixed code sequence in response to each byte code. And then a more interesting JIT, which um, uh, does constant folding and uh, defers uh, code generation to allow it to map uh, to map parts of the stack to registers and have a register-based calling convention. Uh, and if that's interesting, I'd like to present that. Um, and then the other is a uh, general uh, approach to the FFI. And this is more, um, so what to say about the FFI? Um, the, uh, there are kind of three main areas in the, in the FFI. One is uh, callouts and um, the other is callbacks. And then the third is, is threading. And um, I would want to present kind of the work that I've got going um, and is on the verge of being released. There's some need to integrate some of the new callback stuff that I've just done with the standard VM. Um, but that basically gives you a, a, a much more uh, flexible VM that's um, a much more flexible VR, VR uh, FFI that's still kind of um, needing some some work and we spent uh, some time last night talking about um, what the the, the Faro and, and Squeak communities can do in, in terms of getting a, a a visual work style FFI where you can uh, you know uh, pull in definitions from uh, reading header files and and uh, in a much more general and easy way deal with with uh, external language definitions so those are the kind of two things that I want to talk about today but I'm open to talking about different things if you want if you want something else. Um, <coughs> yeah. So uh, as you know how to for the rest of the audio, but I would like to to see more of details how how to actually run simulate. Yeah. And a basic operation basic which we could help to uh, explore the enough of this idea. So let's um, do that while I do the, the code generator. So I will run I will give you the, the demo of the code generator in the context of the of the simulator but I'll kind of start off the simulator and spend much more time on starting the simulator and, and what that kind of looks like. And I can show you the classes and give you some kind of idea there. Um, I might even show you a cool hack or two in there, which is, uh, is discussed and, and fun. Um, so, OK, so that's one thing, doing, doing more on the simulator. So um, if you have a look at the um, Oh, Jesus Christ. Oops. I don't think it is. I mean, is it possible for the AV guys to, to focus maybe a little bit? Is that the thing? Is, I suppose I could go on to this.
I mean, that sucks. That sucks. It really sucks. It's, it's, uh, come on. I'm, now I can't even get to my display preferences. There we go. So we, ah, uh, oh, hang on. Turn off the mirroring. And then 1080 at 1050. No, it won't. It, it it only accepts this one, so we have to we have to live with that. If you have a look at the standard uh, uh, FFI, uh, there's all of this uh, low level assembler, and um, the basic approach to marshalling in the old FFI is to um, grab all of the small talk objects that you want to pass out into a call in some kind of array. And once you've got them and you've validated them and you've kind of found uh, what parts of the objects you want to pass out, the base addresses, et cetera, and you might have made some strings, you then copy that, uh, you then uh, that, that uh, call some assembler code whose job it is to take those values from that array and actually uh, push them onto the stack and, and, and make the call, which is a disaster uh, because it's not re-entrant, because you've got one static array that you're putting all of these uh, items into. And um, if you were to re-enter via a callback and call out again, you, you, you'd ruin, you'd, you'd overwrite that, that, that array. So the um, basic approach that you want to take with any kind of, of um, uh, low-level uh, FFI stuff uh, in your, if you're implementing in C is to use uh, alloc, which is the, um, the stack allocator in, in C. So I re-implemented the, um, the FFI plugin uh, to be uh, re-entrant uh, for my work on, on threading. And um, where is the And I want to um, go into this in some detail to try and explain how this works for people who would want to implement uh, on uh, another, another platform. So when you come into the, uh, when you come into the FFI uh, with uh, a, a primitive, uh, there are two basic uh, entry points. One is um, an entry point where the arguments come in by an array which is this guy, external function invoke with arguments, which is kind of uh, if you wanted a function object and you wanted to, to do an explicit apply. And the other is primitive callout, where you've got a method and it's got an FFI uh, pragma in it, meth uh, method tag in it, and the, um, the arguments come in just as normal uh, method arguments. So um, in this uh, plugin, uh, we use uh, FFI call as the the common entry point, and um, you know it's it does a whole series of of, of standard uh, validations, and then sets up the state it needs uh, to go uh, marshal. So um, I'm going to go through this. And excuse me for uh, kind of demoing on the fly. So what 
we need to do is add another window. Uh, what are they called? That's right, crawl out state. So, yeah. Okay. Right. So um, let me Okay. So the uh, FFI is the foreign function interface which is the facilities for calling out and calling back according to the platform application binary interface, the ABI, right? And the ABI on the vast majority of, of platforms, certainly the platforms that we typically run on Squeak, just means the C calling convention. The C calling convention defines the platform ABI to call system calls. You, 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 you call it with C data types according to C calling conventions. Um, of course, if you're talking about the Mac, there are other elements of the uh, of the ABI which may be Pascal calling conventions and, and which may have elements of, of um, objective C binding, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But all of those tend to be built upon the basic uh, C uh, uh, facilities. And so those are facilities like um, the calling convention is such that uh, uh, arguments are... Um, the number of arguments is variable, and it's the caller's responsibility to cut back the stack after it's pushed on the arguments, right? So that the uh, the, the callee can expect uh, uh, arguments to appear uh, on the stack in a particular order. Uh, there may be uh, alignment requirements. So on on modern x86, um, the stack is aligned uh, modulo uh, 16 bytes, which allows uh, all of the uh, advanced uh, SSE instructions to have aligned access to the stack uh, and, and, and function faster. And in, in fact, if you get things like that wrong on the Mac when you're implementing your ABI and you call uh, uh, operating system facilities with a misaligned stack, you'll get strange, <laughs> uh, strange errors and um, uh, uh, your, your system won't run pop properly. Um, so yeah, it, and it's a weird exception, right? And, 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 you know, I remember the first time it happened to me thinking, God, this is a compiler bug, but no. It was just having the wrong stack alignment. So that's what the FFI is. Now, in, um, in Squeak, um, the way that we can write an, an, an FFI call is kind of almost a, a, a C signature. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like a, a real piece of C because um, uh, the parser right now is a hack. So for example, this uh, function name, this is, this is part of the uh, uh, ODBC connect. Uh, this function name is a string, and there's no commas in front of the, in between these types. And you, can't, you, you notice that void star here, there's no space between the, the void and the star. And I always like to put a space between my, my types and my stars. Well, that's because. The, the tokenizer here only recognizes void star. If you say void space star, that's, that's, that's a, an error, and it will get confused and not compile. So uh, right now, the FFI is kind of rather hacky, and we don't have a proper parser. And um, one piece of work that somebody valiant in the community would, would, would do would be to take putty parser and write some comprehensive um, uh, C-level parsing facilities and, and allow us to, uh, uh, basically, the goal is to be able to copy and paste uh, uh, C declarations from headers and, 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 and drop them into methods and, and, and have that compile properly um, and, and, and construct. Right. Yeah. You can do this in making, I made this. Yeah, yeah. So, it's a, but but we have to make it work on all. We, we talked about that last night. So, um, so that's uh, so that's the FFI, and its and its uh, it, its its goal is to allow the Smalltalk programmer to use uh, platform facilities uh, by making uh, Smalltalk message sends uh, on objects. And so, if I instantiate an ODBC library by uh, sending it 
the, the messages in this, in this protocol here, um, I'm able to invoke the uh, underlying ODBC library and integrate my squeak program with a, uh, with a, an SQL database, etc. Now, a reentrant FFI is one in which um, the system will allow me to make more than one call out uh, concurrently. So, um, if uh, an element of the FFI um, allowed, uh, you know, uh, if if in making some C call. Um, let's say a quick sort. I, uh, 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 if you use the the C quick sort facility, it makes callbacks into your program. It expects to be given a function pointer to compare two elements in the in the sort. Um, and so you would come back in with your your callback. Now you're inside the uh, the system. What if you want to make another call out in the context of that callback? Now you're being reentrant. You're reentering the the call out facility. Right. And the FFI in the standard interpreter is not reentrant. The marshalling engine, this basic marshalling engine, uh, uh, communicates between the Smalltalk plugin code and the code whose job it is to actually construct a, a native stack frame without going arguments and make the call right, with a static array. Um, and, and that static array also takes in information to, to do with passing back the result. So as soon as you re-enter, you're going to smash that outer call. Uh, and by the time you unwind to that outer call, you're going to get incorrect results at best and a, and a, and a crash at worst. worst. So um, the uh, foreign function interface needs to be <coughs> fully re-entered. You need to be able to make uh, uh, nested calls uh, and callbacks uh, as deep as you, uh, as you may need. Uh, and uh, what you also really need, which is a, a, more, a more pressing uh, issue, is for the system not to block while it's making an FFI call. So the, the second part of this will be about not blocking. So basically, what, what happens in the current FFI is as soon as you make um, a call out, the one thread that is the virtual machine thread has now been committed to making this call. That's what, that's what it's doing. Um, and you won't be able to run Smalltalk until you get a callback or a return from that foreign function, right? So you are, you know, if you're if you're building a web server, and the back end of your web server is a connection to a database, then you can't serve web requests while you're doing uh, queries on the database, right? Which is completely unsatisfactory. So you know, in a in a in a proper platform, you need um, uh, the ability to make uh, non-blocking calls, where uh, in some way, the system arranges that, that when uh, an FFI call is made, Smalltalk can continue uh, programming, uh, 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 executing on, on, the, on the site. OK. Thank you so much. I, I never <laughs> start off at the right level. I always okay. try and drown myself first. OK, so let's look at, uh, at re-entrancy in the, in the context of the, uh, of the plugin and, 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 and marshalling in, in, in general. Before going, can I ask you a question? What's the error parameter in, the, in this FFI uh, Can I define the error? So I never saw that. one thing that I added to the virtual machine when I was working on Newspeak at Cadence was the, the same facility that you see in, in visual works, which is that uh, primitives can return an error code. And um, if I do So here's a primitive uh, adopt instance, uh, which is a primitive on a class and asks that class to change the, the class of uh, an object to be an instance of itself. Um, 
So for example, uh, oh, this won't work, of course. <laughs> Two, three, let's try it. I don't think it'll work. Now let's do this instead. So A times equal to one over two point dot instance A A Pont point dot instance. Yay! So that was amazing. So, but what if we try and do this? Um, or float. Oh no, it didn't work. Because of course, on the heap, uh, a, a point is uh, uh, something that, that has pointers in it, and a float is something that has raw data. And so you can't coerce raw data into object pointers because it would allow you to synthesize illegal pointers. And if I go in here and I have a look at my uh, primitive, my error code is inappropriate operation. Yeah, let me let me let me show you. Hang on, hang on. Give me time, lad. I was going to do that. So. What are these? Um, oh no, no, small talk image. That's right. So recreate special objects array is the small talk side of populating that array that contains all of the objects that the virtual machine needs to know about, right? So right now in this system, it's, uh, it's a 56 uh, element array. And here we are, nil, false, and true. And here's the processor association so that it can get hold of, of the scheduler. And then uh, well-known classes. Uh, this isn't needed, but it's there. It shouldn't be there. We don't need small talk in the virtual machine, but never mind. Um, and uh, So the virtual machine never needs to look for classes except the uh, horrible facility in the plugin, which allows you to look up uh, classes, uh, allows you to say, is something an instance of a class which is named a string? Mm -hmm. right, the only facility in the plugin is you can say, uh, is the object that I have in my hand an instance of something which is called foo? Right. Um, and I can't remember how that, that, that works. But basically, the virtual machine doesn't need to know a lot of classes. It needs to know things like a byte string, a float, right? basic C-level data types. And those are the only kind of level of classes that it needs. It needs, for example, to do does not understand. It needs the class message and class array, right? because that's, that's what a message is. Right? So, the, so basically, the, the set of classes that the virtual machine knows is a subset of this. It doesn't actually need all of these. But typically, you need, you need a handful. You need like 10 or 12 in, 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 in standard virtual machines. And, and you know, putting lots more information in the VM about, about the full uh, dictionary is a really bad idea. So let's not go there. So I don't think that this is actually used. Um, and it, it, it might. It's not used. Right, it's not used. And, and, and you, know, you don't need it as a root. The, the roots of the system are things like the scheduler. Right. From the scheduler, you should be able to reach the entire world. That's got all of the processes which are, which are active. Right. And that, that really constitutes uh, the system root, if you, if you want to. So OK, as we, as we saw yesterday, you know, we need does not understand and, and various errors are, are, are selectors. So there's cannot return and cannot interpret, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And um, one thing that's, that's, that we have is, is the character table, which is 256 
uh, unique character instances, which we wouldn't need if we had immediate characters in the virtual machine, which, which we will get at some stage. And here's that compact classes array, which is the, the, uh, you know, the space-saving thing. Um, and then, um, uh, this is an interesting one. Uh, these are the, the so-called special selectors. You'll see that they encode for uh, the first 16 are arithmetic, and then the, the second 16 are, are very, very common uh, messages. And these basically sa save, uh, sci uh, save space in the, in the literal frame of a, of a method because there's a bytecode which just uh, says, OK, do plus. And it means I don't have to you know, one doesn't have to include the symbol plus. Uh, as, a, as a literal in, in a method. Right? So these are space saving. But in an interpreter, they can also be used to save time because the, that bytecode can, can then implement things like, OK, if the two elements on the top of the stack are small integers, let's just short, shortcut it. Right? So when you, when you go on down the bottom, there's this guy. And this is the um, uh, table of uh, primitive error codes. And so what, what happens is uh, if you want to add a new uh, uh, error code, uh, 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 send a message to the squeak list and say, look, the, this is a fundamental new character of error, and um, add it somewhere in here. Um, and so we give it some unique number. Uh, and so what we get back right now, we don't get any, any parameters here. For example, one thing you might want, which you get in visual works, is for an error to have a parameter, an error to say, uh, I don't have enough memory, and here's the amount of memory that, that I didn't have. Right? But right now, we've just, we've just got the symbols, which give us some kind of, of, of information. So that's uh, at, the, at the image side. And then what do we have? Yeah. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. Let, me, let me show you that. In the, on the virtual machine side, in object memory, off to the, um, the side. Oh, no, it's probably an in stack interpreter. Initialize primitive error codes. Ha. Huh. Right, it is in, in object memory class. I thought it was. Why can't I? Why can't I see this? Ah. I think it's uh, user CV error code plus. I don't no, I, it's just kind of. I can't read. I think I, I had the instance button pressed or something like that. It's as stupid as that. So here we go. There's a series of of, of class variables, uh, um, and two, uh, etc. So in the VM code, you can mention these. And if you look in um, in square virtual machine .h, which is the standard header file giving you, you know, all of all of the the plugin API for for a, this is type def struct virtual machine, and here are all of the the functions for building plugins like pop, push, et cetera. This is your basic interface to the, to the VM. At the top of this file um, uh, are the primitive error codes that you can, that you can use. Right? So um, the way that you do that is use primitive fail for, and you give it an error code. So if I show you some examples in the, uh, in the image, Um, gradually, we're getting there uh, in terms of, of, of using these. Come on. Oh, come on. Oh, that's right. What? I don't get it. What's going on? Give me senders of these. Missing? Right, but uh, oh well. 
Mm. Ah. <laughs> okay. There we go. So let's have a look at, at, at some more interesting ones of these interpreter primitives. And so here is a dot instance. And so um, you can see that the way that this is structured is you grab your arguments off the stack and then you ask object memory to change class of. And if it returns zero, you're good. And you flush uh, uh, the at cache, the thing that tries to sp speed up at put in the, uh, in the interpreter. Otherwise, you do a primitive fail for whatever that error code is. So uh, object memory implements change class of. And does things like say, OK, uh, if the format, the basic object format of the, of the two objects don't match, return prim error in, inappropriate, which is exactly what we saw. Right? So um, you've got this, uh, this basic uh, error reporting facility, which can really help in trying to explicate what the, the primitive error is. And so that's, that's going to be important in the FFI, because there's all sorts of reasons why an FFI call might, might fail. Wrong number of argument count, wrong wrong kind of argument, etc., etc., etc. You saw it, right? You saw it. You saw it. Yeah. Let, let me let me let me do this guy again. Let me do this guy again, right? We just saw that, right? So here in in adopt instance, we can look at the error code and its inappropriate operation, right? Well, it's not. It's not limited. If 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 you use a number, if you use a number which doesn't match that array, you'll get the number, right? So you can use whatever you like. It's just that's fine. That's fine. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, but but I think you know these symbols are are, are much more easy to to use. But yes, so, so the idea is that we should, you know, when we come up with a new general one, we should add it to the table. But if you want to, to use, you know, from 1,000 to 2,000 for your own error codes, go ahead. Right? And I, I think I actually do that in one case. Does it put a reference to exceptions Well, no, because, the, you know, exceptions are all up there, right? Um, so <laughs> why complicate? The, the problem is whenever you put that kind of information down in the VM, right, Next year, it's crap, right? It's really great now, and then next year it's just oh, I need new facilities, and then yeah. all of your VM is no longer backward compatible, and you have to change your VM, etc. No, the idea is that you have uh, the reference to exception classes in the special object table, and then you, in the in the the VM you put only the the, the index of the right, uh, right, but but class. but um, so then we can raise. Uh, an exception, exception for right. Each, each error. right? But um, some of the some of the kind of errors you might get, you might not want to handle in that in that way. So one of the things that happens in the in the VisualWorks FFI is that if you make an FFI call and you haven't actually looked up the call, you haven't done the linking, then instead of you raising an exception, um, there's there's a there's by chicanery. Uh, um, a message is, is sent which, which causes the system to, to go through and do that linking operation and then resend the call. I suppose you could, I suppose you could do it with the exceptions. It's just, um, yeah, I hadn't thought of doing that. Yeah, that, that might be uh, a good way of going about it. The, 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 the thing is, I think that the best way to put that in is in your primitive failed method, right? So let's say instead there was a standard convention where you say primitive fail for EC, right? And then it was the small talk code that, that, that mapped it, right? That keeps it minimal and it gives you the, 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 the right way. And I think that's the better way of doing it. And that's certainly what you want to do for the FFI, right? Because the FFI... Yeah, for example, uh, on Windows, you usually uh, create a get error code from, from uh, every time you approach it. Right. Um, and if you were to make, for example, a plugin in the run of the Ubuntu, there's 
that's usually where you probably want to return. Right, right. And I think there, what you do want is you do want a structured object where you have, where you have two fields, where you have what, what's the name of the generic error, and then there's a parameter. And the parameter can be the windows, the get, the, the, the get uh, last error value, or erno in, in, in Unix. Um, and uh, yeah, this is just pragmatic, because it was just very, very quick to get, to get going for, for new speak. But I think you know, if we, if we were to, to do a next generation VM, you would want you would want something like that. Okay, so so that's what that's what error codes are. So back to the um, FFI uh, plugin. So um, who who has never used alloc A? Who's, who has no idea of, of what a, a C stack frame looks like? So, um, that's, that's two questions. Yeah, 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 that's right. So what you need to do to, 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 to do a, a, a call out on a, um, on a C stack looks very much like that, that, that stack uh, stuff that we did yesterday. And basically, outgoing arguments uh, 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 go down, and then there's a you make a a call out, and what's on the stack is outgoing arguments with the uh, the first argument lowest. The first argument is the nearest to the return PC. So you 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 marshal in reverse order. So your last argument is the first thing on the stack, and the reason why you do that is because that gives you um, variable arguments. So if you look at, at, at a printf call in C, right, looks like this. <coughs> okay, so what, what have you got on the stack? You've got a pointer to the address world, and then you've got a pointer to the string Right, and these have, have, have null bytes at the end, right? And then um, there's the return PC, which was established by the, the stack. And if you're on x86, there would also be a zero here to align the stack on, on four on four word boundaries for SSE, right? So that would be, the call would, would, would include a, a, a zero here. So, uh, now the, the function, once it's built its frame, can access uh, arguments just by looking back. So the first argument's here, and the second argument's here, and the third argument's here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that, that's what's happening in the, in the C calling convention. It's very, very easy to get to uh, variable arguments uh, because the uh, first argument is the last one that's marshaled, right? And the last argument is the, is the, is the first one that's, that's, that's marshaled. And because the uh, caller uh, takes, cuts back the stack, removes the arguments from the stack, unlike the, pa the Pascal calling convention, um, it means that you can call any function with too many arguments. Right? Obviously, you can't call it with too few, because it will try and access the, the garbage that's on the stack where it expects an argument. But you can call any C function with, with, with too many arguments, and, and those arguments will simply be ignored. The, the callee call function will never look at them. So um, C gives you um, a, a whole series of facilities. Malloc you'll, you'll have used where you, know, you just get some uh, amount of memory from uh, the, the, the heap, and you can give that back with free. Uh, but there's a much more fun one, alloc A. And what alloc A does is allocate uh, on the current stack pointer. So if you were in this situation uh, with your, uh, you know, you've got a frame pointer. And you're doing printf, and you need some local storage.
and this is your, your, your situation, and you say uh, 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 allocate uh, 32, what the runtime system does is this. Uh, in fact, it would be this. And the return from alloc A would be, uh, th uh, would be this guy. And so you've got uh, 32 bytes, four words, that you can use. Subtract, subtract the 32 from subtract Pointer. And just gives you, gives you the thing. Now, there's, there's, there's trickiness because on, on certain platforms, it may actually give you this. There may be a hidden word. Uh, and so, you know, you, you need to you need to, to verify this and actually actually look at what machine code it produces. You know, generate the assembler, uh, and, and and have a look at the details. But basically, uh, allocate allocate space on the stack. So that's exactly what you need if you want to. Um, okay, so okay, it allocates space on the stack, and that space is is uh, reclaimed implicitly when you return from a function. Right. So the great thing about stack allocation is it's a form of garbage collection. It gives you space which has dynamic extent of, of, the, of the function. Right? And, the, and the, the, the memory doesn't live beyond the function. As soon as you return, all of that space is reclaimed. Right? So one of the things that I do in the, in the JIT um, Is here's um, a function in the in the JIT, which um, in the simulator allocates the space that I need for um, for jitting. So uh, here's a big array, which is filled with um, abstract opcodes, which are the things that the, the the which is the basically the assembler that that the JIT generates it generates a series of of, of these abstract opcodes. Um, and it needs uh, uh, fix-ups for uh, branches, etc. And um, uh, it needs some annotations to attach metadata to, to, to instructions, like this is a send or this is an object reference and stuff like that. So all of that's great in Smalltalk, and, and you know I can use the garbage collector to reclaim it. But in the C version of the VM, what do I do? So what I do is uh, stack allocate. So all of this is done with alloc A, and then you invoke the JIT, you stack allocate as much space as you need to do all of your jitting, um, and then when you return from having jitted, all of that space is reclaimed. Right? So um, uh, stack allocation is ideal when you're invoking uh, some service that needs uh, memory that doesn't outlive its extent. Right? It's, uh, and you'll see this in, 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 in the units of, of, of many programs, GCC, et cetera, it uses a, a sophisticated stack allocation scheme for its internal data structures often. So, um, question. There is, uh, is there any constraint on the, the size of the stack? Yeah. So uh, if you uh, are in a... I mean, any, there is no, there is no um, formal constraint in the language definition, and there are lots of pragmatic constraints that will depend on various circumstances. So if you're in a, 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 a thread system, uh, a POSIX thread implementation, um, where uh, threads are given fixed size amount of stack, you better make sure that you don't <coughs> ask for more stack than you have in your thread. And when you create the thread, you, you may have to be conscious of the fact that you're going to do a lot of stack allocation in that thread, and, and when you uh, set up the, the thread, uh, give, it, give it more stack. Right. So yeah, you can yeah, absolutely fall foul of things like that, and you just have to uh, program your way around it. And of course, you know, when, you, uh, when you allocate too much, the, uh, the, the system reports errors in a really clear way. You know, GDP just crashes completely, and, and you have no idea what's going on, and you know, yeah, that's that's the well, that's life. You know, we've been there. Okay, so um, this is exactly what you need for doing marshalling 
if I can stack allocate some space and get a pointer back to the stack, I can then fill in uh, this with exactly the same information that I filled in when I made this call, right? You know, I get I get some handle to storage, and uh, it's even ordered in the right way, right? The the first argument goes in the first slot, and the second argument goes in the second slot, right? It, it even goes in the right direction. I don't even have to subtract and and come back. Right. There are other languages who, which allow you, like F, which oh. allow you to actually manipulate this stack directly. So you can you don't have to, to invent some kind of right, some kind of hack. But 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 the the the, the problem with with those things, as we, as we'll see when we we talk about like marshalling for something that has register arguments, is that you know the the stack isn't all that's going on, right? The stack is, is maybe an adequate abstraction on x86, where, where the calling convention is very simple and the machine is, is simple, but it's not an adequate abstraction on PowerPC, where there are eight floating point registers and, 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 and eight integer registers as part of the calling convention as well, right? And then, then we have to take some, some special treatment there. So, um, So what's going on in this plugin is the goal of uh, marshalling is to have uh, constructed um, uh, via allocate a, um, a callout frame on the stack with all of the arguments in the right position. And then to make a call, and then when you get the return information, to return back. And because we're on the stack here, if, uh, if this code calls back into the VM, all of our state is on, is on the stack. And we can call out again, and then everything will unwrap, and there's no static state, and everything is fully re-entered. So what um, uh, I do to coordinate the uh, marshalling is have uh, a callout state. And so the callout state um, is the current uh, the current index into this space, right? Where are we? Which argument are we dealing with as we as we successively marshal objects? So arg vector is the at basic allocated space that you get back uh, from allocate, and then current arg is the object that you're that you're currently trying to marshal into that, um, and limit is the the maximum size of arg vector so that you don't step off the end. And then there's all sorts of other information, like if we're returning a struct. Um, in C, the typical implementation of uh, structure return is that the caller makes space available somewhere to receive the struct that's being returned and passes a pointer to that memory. And then the callee finds the pointer and copies the bytes which constitute the struct through that pointer. Right. So. If I want to take a struct return from something, I've got to make memory available in my allocate space and, 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 and save it there. And so there's, there's some other, uh, other stuff which are Im implementation details, exactly how the, um, uh, exactly how the VM um, agrees, uh, sorry, exactly how the image uh, encodes this type information. So if I inspect, explore this method, what happens here is that the uh, image level compiler, FFI compiler, basically uh, invents a little byte-coded language to define argument types. And so, um, here, each of these argument types comes down into some little structured object uh, that has in it some, some bits that the, the virtual machine can make sense of that tell it things like, you know, what's the size of this thing? Is it a, is it a char? Is it, is, it, is it a long, et cetera? Um, and so um, in, the, uh, in the VM, the marshalling needs to, and we don't need to go into too much uh, uh, detail here, uh, the marshalling uh, state 
needs to hold on to uh, those uh, those kind of things. And so the um, the correspondence here is the 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 first the first one of these is the return type. So we're going to get a short back. And so this this kind of compiled spec, which has information about the return type, is uh, what what the callout state is holding on to here. So these these guys basically get filled in with each argument as we as as we go, uh, because information needs to be passed down the call chain as as to what what what's the current uh, object that we're looking at. Now another thing that happens is that this FFI has a rule for strings which is that um, you know, squeak strings are not null terminated, and C strings must be null terminated. So what the FFI does is um, uh, make a, a local copy of, uh, of a string uh, big enough to have the null termination. And then when you return, freeze those. I think it uses malloc. So uh, that state uh, to do with the um, with how many strings we've encountered, etc. So now we can go back to that um, original method. And find, what was it called? Right. So what we need to do, um, where's the callout state? Right, right. Um, to skip a load of detail, I just want to, want to give you the, yeah, I mean, because you can make sense of this uh, later on, and, and if you really need to have a look at uh, details, and it does make no sense now, you can send me email. But I, w I want to, to, to like give you a tour so that you've got some idea of, of, what's, of what's going on. So uh, what's, what, what's going on here is um, the, uh, how do we know how much space to allocate? The only way that we'll really know how much space to allocate is if we've marshaled the arguments. So once we've, we've marshaled a series of arguments, then we can really make an accurate assessment of how much space. So what this, this thing does is um, uh, caches in the um, external function uh, object that's, that's in the, the header of the method um, how much space was actually needed to marshal. And if that... Uh, field isn't initialized, it uses some default amount. So uh, the first time you make a call out, it grabs 16k bytes of stack space. And then when it's marshaled, and it figures out how big the, the call out phrase, uh, the call out stack really is, it writes that value into the function pointer. Right? And so then the next time it won't allocate 16k bytes, it'll allocate uh, just as much as it needs, typically so just a few hundred bytes. Large stack growth, because you don't want huge stack growth. I mean, if you, if you right, 16K is kind of a lot to use for one frame, right? Okay, but ca calculating the second time is not too hard to traverse to one for the... Like, right, and, 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 and you know, if you're, if you're making a, 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 a tiny little call to printf, you might only need 32 bytes and stuff. So the next time round, right. Okay. okay. So um, what, we, what we do is stack allocate... Um, uh, enough space for uh, the actual space that we calculated on a previous call that we needed, plus uh, space for the struct return if we had have one, plus uh, as we'll see, um, how do we use allocate to call something that has register arguments, and so we may need some spare uh, space to deal with register arguments, and I'll come back that to that in more detail plus space for uh, whatever alignment on the, on the stack there is, whatever alignment requirements. And once we've uh, done that uh, basic stack allocation, then we fill in the callout state with, um, with that information. So the callout state uh, points at the, at the allocation once we've correctly uh, aligned it. Um, and then we, uh, we uh, start marshalling um, at a particular point in that. And then uh, there's a loop over 
uh, each argument. And this is the thing which is fetching those three values here from these three values. Right. So there's the, there's the correspondence in the, the small talk object for each argument and the, um, the plugin grabbing those, those things. So that there's an arg type, an arg spec, and an arg class. And um, so FFI argument is the, uh, is the basic dispatch. And um, again, I don't want to go into lots of detail, but I'll show you kind of one example. Uh, somewhere, uh, some right, and so it's doing things like, okay, uh, is is this uh, a basic integer or is it a structured structured object, etc. And 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 gradually, this 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 tree of code picks apart the small talk object and 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 is able to fill in some value in the allocate uh, space for that argument. And, and, and if, if uh, any constraints are violated, it will return an appropriate error code. So uh, what we've done when we've successfully enumerated over the arguments is we've populated this allocade space. And we're now at a point where we can actually make a call. So let's, let's jump to the, to the point where we actually make the call. Um, and that's down the bottom here, FFI callout. So... So we've um, marshaled the arguments, and we can uh, actually uh, make the call. And so the problem to be uh, solved is to collect the return type. So um, the function pointer was 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 handed was handed in, um, you know, uh, in this uh, in this uh, object. There's a space for a handle in the, in the literal. And the handle is the address that we get back from whatever the linker machinery is when we look up the, the function name we're interested in, 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 in calling. Right? So when we open up the ODBC library and we want to call you know, SQL connect, we have to present the string SQL connect to some library machinery which searches through the library and says, OK, SQL connect is at this particular address, and then that that address will get held in the handle. And that's the address that we have to, to actually call when we've, when we've marshaled our, our code. Right? And that's, that, that's remembered in, in the handle, so we don't have to look it up on every time. It's only the first time we make the call. Um, so once we, once we make the call, um, all of the arguments are in exactly the right place for, for, for our allocate uh, uh, memory for, for, the, for the call to receive them. That's not quite true. But uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take you back and show you how we, we make sure that, that that really is. Um, oh, no, I can show you here. What, uh, what if um, there was some stack alignment and, and you know, we, we had to meet uh, some alignment uh, requirements. And so we, we, we over allocate the amount of, 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 of space here. Um, and, um, you know, the the. Uh, the actual value of the stack pointer at the point of call needs to be different. What we can do is just before we make the call, we can actually assign the stack pointer to point to where we really want it to, to, to be. So, so you know, uh, if, 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 there's, if there's a 32-byte stack alignment that you have to make, over allocate the amount of space that you have by 32 bytes, compute what the, what the stack pointer would be if it was correctly aligned, Marshal into that, and you've got this extra space uh, that, 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 to make sure that you could meet that alignment. And then just before you make the call, with one assembler instruction, cut the stack pointer back to the correctly aligned point. Right, and then, and then actually make the call. Um, and we will come back and use that for register arguments too. No, 
no, no, no, no, no, no. If 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 when you if you, if when, when you ask allocate, if allocate, if if there's no stack requ uh, alignment requirements other than four bytes, right? I mean, this is what it used to be ten years ago, right? If you're on x86 and there's no need to align the stack at all, and allocate doesn't lie to you, allocate just decrements the stack pointer and gives you the stack pointer value, that works. That's fine. But modern allocates try and be clever, and they do things like, um, you know, there's all sorts of stuff like red zones, where there's some space between, between you and the, and the top of stack to take interrupts, or, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, on um, Win32 with the uh, MinGW compiler, allocate always answers four bytes away from the stack. So it does subtract the stack, but it always subtracts the stack plus four, and then irritatingly gives you the wrong byte, right? Which is like, why? But, but that's what it does, okay? So in those circumstances, you know, if allocate doesn't actually give you the value of the stack pointer and gives you some other value, fine, marshal into that, and just before you make the call, change the stack pointer to point where, at that first argument. And, th and then it's going to work, OK? So what's nice here is instead of having loads and loads of assembler machinery for building the stack frame, right, we've only got like one or two tiny little assembler instructions that we use in judicious places. Right? I agree that it's a hack, but it means that the bulk of this is, you know, is, is, is portable small talk, right? Um, so OK, uh, we've made the call. And um, the called code will, will get its arguments off the stack, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then we have to get uh, the, the, the result back. So this is a point where the, uh, the application binary interface uh, really, uh, really matters. On uh, x86, which is a very simple uh, system, there's basically uh, four kinds of, of, of return. There's uh, it's a double, and you get a value back in a floating point register. And the value that comes back in the, in the standard uh, integer uh, register is uninteresting. So if you try to call a function which returns a double, and you, you declared it as returning a long, you would not get the result back. You'd get whatever garbage was left in EAX. Right? So to get to get the C compiler to generate code that's going to fetch the return from the right place, you have to declare it correctly. You have to declare it as your function pointer as returning a double. And then the code that, that the C compiler generates will access uh, you know, the, uh, the, the zero floating point register to give you the, the, the result back. So OK, so that's one kind, double. Then we've got. Um, uh, the value is uh, four bytes in, in EAX. And that's the standard for, for anything that's returning a, a, an integer. And then there's another one which is eight bytes, and it's in EAX, EDX. So those, those clearly at the, at the machine level, one's a superset of the other. Right? We, we don't care. If we declare this thing as returning, as I do here, returning 64 bits, because it's little endian, you know, you've got EAX, EDX. Um, that this one covers uh, the, the ones which just return four bytes. And then there's another one, which is um, it's a struct. And a struct comes back through um, either a hidden pointer, where uh, we give it a pointer to, to memory and it copies it in, or uh, depending on the, on the platform, if the struct is small enough to fit in two registers, it'll come back as a as for uh, as up to eight bytes in those two registers, right? So again, that's a superset. So the four kinds of of of, of basic return convention on x86 are covered with two cases. It's either a double or it's 32 uh, or it's 64 bytes, uh, 64 bits. So this thing is 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 u square long is is just one of the many names for a 64 bit value. So we either get a floating point return value or we get a 64-bit uh, return value. Um, and then, uh, OK, maybe we're calling a, um, a, a function which uh, uses the Pascal calling convention 
in which case the caller, uh, sorry, the callee, uh, cut back the stack. And um, we don't want it to cut back the stack because we need that state. And so we, we, uh, uh, we're in C. We uh, put the stack back to, to where we expected to because this function being compiled with the C calling convention is it's going to cut back the stack. So if we don't want the stack to get cut back twice, we have to undo the stack cutback that the, that the Pascal convention guy did, right? even though we're not interested in the, in the state. So then um, we can um, uh, uh, marshal the return value uh, uh, from, the, from the state. So here's the, the, the marshaling of the return value. So if it's a pointer, we grab a pointer from the value that we have in the integer return. If it's a structure, we have to return the struct. And let me show you uh, if I apply uh, return struct. And so this is the guy that, that encodes those rules. For example, uh, is the return struct, does the return struct fit in registers? And if it fits in registers, then I'm going to take it from those, those eight bytes. And um, return struct in registers, uh, right, is then sort of horrible, horrible stuff like on Win32. Um, uh, if the size is less than or equal to 8, and it's a power of 2, so structs which are size 6 bytes don't come back in registers. <laughs> and it's not documented anywhere, and you have to talk to Microsoft, and they say, oh, didn't you know that? Oh, no, no, it has to be a power of 2. Okay, makes sense. So, <laughs> yeah, that was fun to find out. Because it didn't work, because I was working with Visual Works, and 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 you know, uh, what is it? Five out of the five out of the seven cases worked, and two of them didn't. And I rang them up, and they, oh, sorry, yeah, it has to be a power two. And it's, you know, it's nowhere in the in the Visual C plus plus documentation. You, you find your your guy on the compiler team, and you keep on prodding. So you know, get me to the next guy in the chain. Oh no, I don't know the answer. Maybe he does, and you you've been there. So okay. Uh, so that's so that's how how the thing works, right? Uh, you allocate some state, give yourself a nice object to, to to point at that state, and and enumerate through the objects, grabbing this type information and and and, and putting stuff in the allocate, uh, make the call, and then come back. And um, what's beautiful about this is that it's all small talk, which is translated to C. There's no uh, assembler apart from tiny little assembler instructions like cut back the stack, set the stack pointer. And um, so the thing is, is, is nice in general. OK, so that's, that, that, that's, that's great. And x86 uh, is, is fine. What do you do on a, um, a system like the ARM? So if you're talking about the ARM, the ARM has uh, four integer registers plus the stack. So if uh, we did printf hello world on the ARM, there would be nothing on the stack. There would be a pointer in, in the first argument register and a pointer in the second argument register, and that's it. And only if you, you got before four arguments would you actually have to start using the stack. If you're talking about the PowerPC, the PowerPC has uh, eight integer registers and eight floating point registers in the calling convention. And um, just because it makes so much sense, uh, those eight registers are paralleled on the stack. So for each of the outgoing integer parameters that's passed in a register, there have to be four bytes on the stack at the same location. And you don't have to write the value back, but. So in those cases, um, this is not going to work, right? We've, we've uh, put space on the, on the stack, and we need to get values in registers. Further, if you're calling a, a function which takes floating point register arguments, those register arguments are taken uh, uh, from floating point registers. And we have to get values in floating point registers. Putting them on, on the stack doesn't get them to the, to the called function. The called function is going to access uh, registers. 
uh, floating point registers and, and we have to find some way of, of putting the value in. Well, you know, C is, is, is a really low level stupid language that can be lied to. Uh, uh, and uh, it's, it's essentially very, very easy to lie to. So um, what you do is um, the trick is if you want to load the floating point register uh, uh, arguments, then as you're marshalling, you need to identify floating point arguments. Right? So if you see a floating point argument, you say, ah, that's the first floating point argument. So in your struct, your callout state, you need like eight slots for the, for the eight argument registers, right? floating point argument registers. And just whenever you, you, you see a floating point argument, you're going to put it in your record of, of how many floating point arguments you've got at the end. And when you come to do the call, you're going to say, have I got any floating point arguments? Is the, is the count of, of floating point arguments non-zero? Right? And so maybe there's five floating point arguments there. Right? And, you, and you can find. What you can do is you can create a dummy function. A dummy function anywhere in your virtual machine, which is just the return instruction. And you declare that as taking floating point arguments. And you just declare it as, as you know, double a, double B, double C, double E, double F, etc. And then you, you, you call it with all of those variables in your state vector. Right? You just call the dummy function saying, OK, I want the first argument to be the double at this address, and the second argument to be the double at that address. And that will load the floating point registers, and then this call will return. And you've just loaded the floating point registers, and now you can make your call. And lo and behold, all the values are there. So that's how you do floating point, right? To pass the integer register arguments, if you declare your function, uh, the function pointer as, you know, uh, we, uh, as, as, as for example, int um, uh, uh, star function pointer, and as taking int a, uh, int b, in C int D, right? Then when when I come to make my call, if in my state I've remembered what the first four arguments are, I can call something with those first four arguments and everything else on the stack allocate. Right? So that's why when you look at this uh, this code chain here, you find that there is a, a, a threaded FFI callout state, and then there's a threaded FFI callout state for ARM, and that adds a register index and integer registers, which are going to be four words for the integers, for the integer register arguments. And if there's, uh, if you're talking about the PowerPC, there's floating point registers and integer registers, and the reg, reg index, right? And so I haven't written this code. But it's all there, and the, and the technique is clear, right? If you've got register arguments, you have to record what those are. And when you come to make the, f the, the, the final call, you uh, use some C that actually uh, you know, looks like func putter uh, uh, callout state uh, uh, reg arg 0 callout state reg arg. One, etc., and then the C compiler will generate code to load the, the register arguments in the right order and, and make the call. So there's one other clever wrinkle, which is on the uh, PowerPC, because the register arguments are actually paralleled on the on the stack. It's not that they're that they're separate. It's that they're actually paralleled. That that if if you know the 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 top eight words on the stack parallel the eight register arguments. Every time you make a function call, when you've allocated your space, right, the top eight words on the stack are going to get overwritten. And they're going to get overwritten by the use of those, um, those uh, because that stack memory is being used to, 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 to back the actual register parameters. Am I making sense? 
So if, 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 you, if you call a function in, in, on, on PowerPC, which takes two arguments, right, the marshalling for that will actually increase the stack by two and, uh, and pass, or it, no. What happens on PowerPC is when you, when you build a stack frame, the C compiler makes sure that the stack pointer has room for as many calls as you're going to make out, so it, like allocates some, some spare space. Okay. So there's, there's some set spare space and the stack pointer doesn't move. Uh, 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 instead, you know, you know where the stack pointer is and, 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 the, and the C compiler is filling in things and making calls. But when you do allocate, the situation is different. You've allocated space, right? And um, uh, uh, if you make a call to, 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 to some function with some register arguments, uh, chances are your lovely allocated space will get corrupted. Right, the top eight eight words may get corrupted because they're they're backing these register parameters. So on PowerPC, what you have to do is make sure that you always allocate eight register arguments more than you need, just to leave that that slop, so that as you make calls marshalling, saying okay, you marshal the struct, okay, you marshal this float, etc., right, that that there's a buffer that's not being used. And so that's what that register arg slot was when you make the call. So when you actually come to make the call, you cut back the stack to, to, to avoid that. Right? Um, I'm not being clear here. I haven't prepared this. I'm sorry. But, the, but that, that's basically, basically the lesson is it doesn't matter what the, uh, the calling convention is. You can get around it with chicanery using, using alloc. And you just have to be very clear on what the uh, application binary interface is, and you know these these things are all spec'd, and have in your mind what alloc does, right? And with all of this facility to be able to lie to the C compiler about what a function pointer is, you can uh, you can get a, a away with it. And so, if anybody is interested in extending this from x86 to ARM or PowerPC, Luke, which you are, right? I can um, uh, take you through these intri intricacies, right? And we can and we can make it work, right? And it's 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 have the application binary interface spec in one hand and what the C compiler does with, with, with uh, uh, alloc in the other hand and then construct this state uh, uh, for managing the, the marshalling in between. Okay, so that's callouts. Why don't we have a break and then we'll come down back and do callbacks. See? See, it's, what, what's your reaction? It's it's all horrible and, and yes. crappy, or it's it's not so simple to understand. Yeah, it's not possible to understand. It's not so simple. No, it's not. Yeah, but it's but not it's but it's really not really that difficult. Um, I, I I should yeah. show you but the. What's the, um, what's the point? If I if I understand the trick of calling. Right. Uh,